Under their fleeces, in terror, they sweated and trembled, wide awake, till at last outworn with weariness. Heavy-lidded, they slept, all but Beowulf. Alone, he watched. Over the misty moor, from dark and dripping caves of his grim lair, Grendel, with fierce ravenous stride, came stepping, a shadow. Under the pale moon he moved, that fiend from hell, foul enemy of God, toward Herat. He beheld it from afar, that gleaming roof towering high to heaven. His tremendous hand struck the studded door. Till the wood splintered and bolts burst apart. Angrily he prowled over the polished floor, a terrible light in his eyes, a torch flaming. As he scanned the warriors deep drugged in sleep, loud, loud he laughed, and pouncing on the nearest tore him limb from limb, and swallowed him whole, sucking the blood in streams, crunching the bones. Half gorged, his gross appetite still unslaked, greedily he reached his hand for the next. Little reckoning for Beowulf. The youth clutched and firmly grappled. Such torture as this the fiend had never known. In mortal fear, he was minded to flee to his lair. But Beowulf prisoned him fast. Spilling the benches, they tugged and heaved. From wall to wall they hurtled, and the roof rang to their shouting. The huge hall rocked. The strong foundations groaned and trembled. Then Grendel wailed from his wound. His shriek of pain roused the Danes in their hiding and shivered to the stars. The warriors in the hall spun reeling from their couches. In dull stupor they fumbled for their swords, forgetting that no man-made weapon might avail. Alone, Beowulf tore Grendel's arm from his shoulder asunder, wrenched it from the root while the tough sinews cracked. And the monster roared in anguish, well knowing that deadly was the wound, and his mortal days ended, wildly lamenting away. Into the darkness he limped over the misty moor to his gloomy home.